Thank you for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. I want to start to look ahead to the upcoming hurricane season. I want to be clear though, this channel, it's not about hype. This channel is about safety. You've been with me for a very long time. That's why I do it. We have no flashy sponsors or anything like that. I just want to put out the correct information as we get into the hurricane season. If you want something flashier, there's other channels out there. This one is just going to be simply about information and trying to keep you safe and not only telling you where a hurricane may go, but also where they're not going to go and where you could uh, let your guard down and, and things will be okay as well. But I do want to touch upon what I'm looking at for the hurricane season, and there's going to be a lot of forecasts put out there, but none of them can really tell us where something is going to go. And that is the most important thing as we get into the hurricane season. Where are these suckers going to end up? Where are they going to go? Well, that's a wait and see. So take those forecasts with a grain of salt. Uh, the numbers will be all over the place. Some of them are trying to scare people. Uh, take them with a grain of salt. But here's what's going on right now. Temperatures in the water, they are running above average. You can see these hot pockets uh, right through parts of the Atlantic, Caribbean, swinging up toward the Gulf, down through the Bay. Water temperatures are once again above average, which is not necessarily a good thing. The water, warm water, fuels these hurricanes and tropical storms. Right now, just looking at some of the water temperatures to see across the Caribbean, 27 degrees Celsius. 81 degrees Fahrenheit, so running a little bit above average. But water temperatures are just one ingredient. There are so, so many ingredients in the hurricane season. We're talking about Saharan dust. That could play a big factor. Some of the, the dry air that could be around. And sometimes that's hard to forecast, and that could sneak in and really change a season. Some of that dry air would reduce the number of hurricanes. So what I look at, I know this is a little bit crazy, is I do look at El Nino and La Nina. Simply put, I don't want to dive too much into the science, but that's looking at some of the global patterns. What's going on? With an El Nino pattern, the water gets very warm in parts of the uh, uh, parts of the Eastern Pacific. Flip side, uh, La Nina, it would be a little bit cooler in parts of the Eastern Pacific. Well, where you get big pockets of warm or cool air, it affects globally what's going on with the weather. So let me tie that in in just a second. Are we in La Nina or El Nino? Well, right now, uh, we've been generally in a weak La Nina. And I'll get into what that means. What does that mean for the hurricanes? La Nina versus El Nino. Well, as we work our way into the upcoming hurricane season, we're going to be kind of in between. So not a strong La Nina, not a strong El Nino. Could be a little bit neutral. Uh, so it could be in between La Nina and El Nino. Well, what the heck does that, that mean? Well, uh, in a La Nina period, that typically means a La Nina cycle, more tropical storms and hurricanes. In an El Nino, this, these are averages, in an El Nino cycle, that usually means less tropical storms or hurricanes. So you see right here in a La Nina cycle, on average, there are 17 named storms, nine become hurricanes. El Nino, if it's an El Nino hurricane season, 11 named storms in five of those uh, typically become hurricanes, right? Uh, so with that said, we may be somewhere in between, but as I mentioned at the uh, beginning of this video, it is so, so critical to point out that regardless of a La Nina or El Nino season, or if you see some other videos saying there's gonna be 20 to 30 uh, her, uh, tropical storms or hurricanes, whatever, and this doesn't tell us where they're going to go, right? That's the biggest thing. There could be a hundred hurricanes, but if they stay out in the water, that doesn't impact us. There could be just one during a hurricane season, but if that rolls right into us, that's a big issue. And that's why I mentioned uh, just uh, being cautious with some of those uh, videos. There's some great ones out there, but some of them are not so great, and they're trying to they're trying to get clicks. They're trying to uh, uh, do that sort of thing. Now, the tropical activity, most of it is August, September and October, that's when 84% of all named storms happen in those three months. That's the peak of the season, right? So those three months. But as we know, with the warm water temperatures I just showed you, uh, I do expect things to pick up quickly uh, this hurricane season. We'll see where things go. Last year, of course, a devastating hurricane barrel. That was early in the season. That was late June into early July. So Hopefully there's no barrel, but I do expect things to start popping up relatively soon. We're into March now, could see something in May. Sometimes you get a few systems in May. And then of course, as we work our way into June, June 1st is the beginning of the hurricane season. These are the names for the upcoming hurricane season. See Barry, Aaron, just a couple of them. Uh, Jerry, get over toward Rebecca. Now you hear some different names. This is for the Atlantic Basin, which includes the Atlantic, 
Caribbean and the Gulf, right? Those three big water basins uh, comprise the Atlantic. So that's the list of names. Other areas around the world have a different set of names. For example, as we work our way into the Eastern Pacific, which I cover as uh, well for you, uh, especially for parts of Central America and uh, Mexico, even drifting back toward California over the last couple of years, the list of names in the Eastern Pacific, uh, Alvin, Barbara, just to give you a couple of these. Now this season starts earlier, May 15th, that season kicks off. So if you hear of an Alvin out there that pops up, that's not on the Atlantic side, that's over in the Eastern Pacific. But these are the new list of names. The names cycle every six years. So we'll see some of those names again in six years, unless you get a big storm and the name is retired and then that name is replaced. Well, what's going on right now? I mentioned in yesterday's video, a big time storm system is going to be rolling by with a severe weather threat for some. A couple little systems have been, a couple little fronts have been clipping by the Northern Caribbean, but what we're going to be watching out for, there's been some big systems out West. We're going to see a lot of energy in parts of the United States, cold air, of course, up toward Canada, but it's going to be a clash of air masses. Watch this. Uh, so a lot of warm weather. Uh, we've been hot in parts of the Caribbean. That surged into parts of the United States. But let's go a couple days out. When you get a clash of warm versus cold, sometimes you get big problems. And in this case, there will be. Watch what happens on Tuesday. And you can see right here, the dividing line is sharp between the very warm air surging in and then the colder air back behind it coming out of the Rocky Mountains right in here. This is where we have that clash of air masses. And as that works into the southern United States, southeastern United States, there is going to be a severe weather threat and a tornado threat. And then the front itself will clip by parts of the northern Caribbean. So let me show you that here. This is as we work our way uh, through the day today. A couple little systems around. I'll zoom down into Canada in just a second. But what we'll be watching throughout the week is that bigger system diving down and we'll just see how it kind of plays out. Let's jump out ahead in time and then I'm going to zoom down for us in the Caribbean. You see here, this is by Tuesday. Remember, I just showed you the class, a clash of air masses, big time system rolling by. We have the warm air out ahead of it, the cold air back behind it. Parts of Texas, more so Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, maybe the panhandle of Florida stretching back toward Georgia. Tuesday into Wednesday, there's going to be a severe weather threat, strong damaging winds, and a tornado threat out of this. We're getting into that springtime pattern in which we'll end up seeing more of this. North side of it, you get back toward parts of uh, Ontario, Quebec, we'll see some snow on the north side of it. Then the heaviest weather tries to surge up toward the north, but that trailing front will clip by Florida, the Bahamas, Cuba. With that, we'll get a shot of some cooler air, even over towards parts of Mexico and Central America. And then by, uh, by the time we get into Thursday of the upcoming week, that front moves by Bermuda. And then we'll watch out for that next system that will be trying to slide by. Now today, back to today, couple little uh, tail ends of fronts, leftover fronts. So Puerto Rico, a couple showers. St. Lucia, Barbados, hit or miss. Honduras, a couple will be around. Even in Jamaica, Jamaica, Haiti, and the Dominican Republic, we're going to see some scattered showers the next couple days with all of this energy up to the north. This is tomorrow, hit or miss shower. Dominica, not as much. Grenada, St. Vincent, the De uh, Grenadines, uh, St. Vincent, the Grenadines, south through uh, Trinidad, not a whole lot. But you see the next couple of days, Jamaica, uh, parts of eastern Cuba, Haiti, the Dominican Republic. This is Monday. We'll see that chance of some of those spotty showers that will be around. Could get a couple downpours, so some isolated flooding, but not widespread. We're not looking at big areas of rain. Now today, here the Bahamas here, Bermuda, watching this system moving by. Mainly a rain event for New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, uh, Newfoundland. But a little bit of snow on the backside may start to crank in. This is Sunday. And then as we work our way into Monday, the, that energy moves offshore. But then we'll be watching out for that next system that will be cranking up. Now, the seas haven't been too bad for the most part. We'll see things picking up once we get deeper into the week with that system uh, moving by the United States. But this here is Monday. So through the weekend and into Monday, watching the Eastern Caribbean, just those Atlantic passageways, which will be a little bit elevated, giving a heads up if you have interest on the water. 
water. Rain total is not too high, but there's a little bit of a, that uh, kind of a purple or pink shading popping up. So Jamaica, Eastern Cuba, I mentioned Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Some of us get rain, some of us stay dry, but we could get a few totals that get over 25 millimeters of rain or an inch of rain. Can't be uh, ruled out. Hit or miss uh, Puerto Rico. Could see a few totals though, still pushing an inch of rain or 25 millimeters of rain, passing shower possible U.S. and British Virgin Islands. And you see St. Vincent the Grenadines, Grenada, Trinidad, not as much. Passing shower, Barbados, St. Lucia, Martinique over toward Dominica. Not as much as well. Venezuela, Guyana, and Suriname. But parts of Honduras watching the Corn Islands, watching uh, Providencia, San Andres, uh, Nicaragua, watching out for some of those scattered showers that could give us a couple inches of rain or 50 millimeters of rain. Spot a shower around Mexico City, mainly dry as we work our way up to Texas. So Jamaica, 40 to 50% chance of some scattered showers for us. 20 to 30% chance in the Cayman Islands. 20 to 30% chance in Trinidad and Tobago. 30 to 40% chance as we get into Barbados. Goes down though on Monday. Hit or miss the next few days as we work our way back through St. Lucia. 20 to 30% chance. That's it in Grenada. And you see the rain chance through the week and it stays low. St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Passing shower Martinique. 30, maybe 40% chance by tomorrow. 40% chance of a passing shower shower with that easterly breeze in Dominica. 30 to 40% chance holds for Guadalupe right into early next week. Rain chance 30% today, Antigua, Barbuda, just a 20% chance tomorrow. Beautiful sunshine for a lot of us. 30% chance in the next couple of days, St. Kitts, Nevis, and Montserrat. About a 20% chance in Gwilla and St. Bart's. You see that rain chance staying low. St. Martin, St. Benstatia, isolated shower. There is that 40% chance, though, of scattered showers. Watching that in Puerto Rico, and we could see a few showers around U.S. and British Virgin Islands. Rain chance 40% in the Bahamas today. 30% chance for us tomorrow. 30% chance the next couple of days through the weekend. Turks and Caicos, 30 to 40% chance in the Dominican Republic. Some scattered showers. Same thing in Haiti, especially tomorrow and Monday. Day. Better chance of rain. Hoping we get some. Need some help in some of those uh, cisterns. Rain chance about 20% in Belize. Our rain chance is not too high. And we're mainly dry. Aruba, Curacao, and Bonaire. That rain chance stays on the low side. On the low side right through the weekend in Guyana. Same thing as we work our way into Suriname. Mainly the dry conditions that will be with us. Rain chance stays pretty low in Cuba. Passing shower possible. 30% chance. Costa Rica, Panama. It's not super high. 30 to 40% chance in Nicaragua. Mainly eastern sections. In eastern sections of Honduras, about a 40% chance. Rain chance staying on the low side, Guatemala and El Salvador. Mainly dry as we get into uh, Mexico City the next couple of days. Uh, Merida, Campeche, over toward uh, Cozumel, Cancun. Rain chance staying low. Isolated shower chance. 30% chance in northern Colombia. Just a 20 to 30% chance in northern Venezuela. And tomorrow, with that front moving by in Bermuda, we'll see that better chance of some rain and some of those elevated uh, see. So it's going to be that warm versus that cold air with that large system developing across the United States that'll clip by the Northern Caribbean. Watching that severe weather outbreak though in parts of the U.S. Monitoring the earthquake activity. We've had some rumblings around. I've been watching that so I'll continue to cover that for you and I'll keep you posted on that upcoming uh, hurricane season. But it's not hurricane season yet so let's enjoy that fact. Thank you for subscribing to this channel. Have a great day ahead.